Hi everyone, this is Mr. Light Visual with another video. I am Dominic and let me welcome and thank the returning viewers. If you are new, you are also welcome. Make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell for more videos. In this video, we will create a residential double story project with interesting features that will give us the opportunity to develop the skill sets needed to tackle any project of your choice. The aim of this video is to bridge the gap between the design and the construction documentation of a project. You will learn how to model well in order to spend less time on documentation and produce a model that will serve as a base for extracting all the documentation and information. The tools to be used are walls, windows, objects, curtain walls and the underrated shell tool. Without any further ado, let's get straight into arcade 26 make sure to download all the resources and projects files used in this video below all right let's start this project in order for us to carry out an efficient and successful project we need to run through some basic settings first so let's um, go to the document or options menu sorry and then under work environment let's change this profile to just architectural basic profile in order for you to see all the tools with the naming alongside it um, that's what i wanted and then uh, let's select all the elevation markers in your floor plan and then open its settings we want to change this to our style so let's just call up this general section and then we have all the sections here the section that i want to access is the marker symbol and text let's change the marker style to circle two which is more like something we are used to more like traditional and then i'm going to click on this arrow to open another page still under the marker symbol and text let's see if open another page you'd find we have uh, parameters to show the reference id to our uh, our symbol or our callout so i'll make sure this box is checked and then let's move up to the marker marker section we want to set the marker size to be 15 millimeters and then i'm going to change its pen to be pen 2 which is around 0 0.15 millimeters okay and then we need also to change the text the text color or the text pen i think let's move here under marker textile set this to be um, 0 0.13 which is color one from the color table okay and then once you're done with that you can hit okay to apply the changes there we go we have that and uh, what we can do now is to make sure the ids they are referenced in our markers so if we select that or it not even selecting it you can come here under the project browser or project navigator um, and uh, find your elevation section you see we have all these elevations and if you select one of it under properties here we have this viewpoint id which is blank at the moment but each and every elevation has to have that we've um we made we made it to reflect the ID from our colors or from our symbol or from our marker, if I may say. So I would say east should be on 0, 01, north will be 0, 02, south will be 0, 03, west will be 0, 04. And you eventually seeing this information being transferred into our being represented. Or reflected into our marker uh, uh, for our elevations okay so that's basically what I wanted to do with this elevation markers don't worry about the blue lines they won't show for printing it's just for the modeling purposes not for printing okay we need to draw a section or to place a section before we can even um, start our project let's go here under the viewpoint we can activate the section tool here and then I'll draw a section line across a horizontal section line that as if you am drawing a line I'll click here to end and then I would uh, choose the viewing direction for the section I would click on this direction then there we go let's select the section and do the same in terms of the marker and all the likes so let's come here under settings dialog and open its settings 
let's see what we can do let's collapse the general and then move straight to the marker symbol and text and change this to circle 3 to be consistent and move to the this page the show reference id is active already we need to move up to the marker section where we can change the height or the size of our marker to 15 millimeters to match the other elevation markers as well and then make sure also the pens they match i will change it to 0 0.5 or 0 0.15 sorry which is color 2 okay and then we need to change for the text let's find here under text style set this to be color one and then go back to the marker this is how the preview is and we need to change the line to be i like dash triple i don't know why for whatever reason and i don't want the the uh line for the marker to be continuous i want them to be cut i don't want to go across the entire width or length of the building so I want it to be segmented i'll select segmented and then make sure i trim it off i break the segment in the middle and then i can come and adjust the length of the segment i'll hit ok to apply the changes so that you can see you could see now i have this extent there pretty much good stuff right okay now we have the base for our project to start one thing that we need to set again is the layout book under layout book we need to create a sheet where all this um, information will be derived in this case we have default um, sheets that come with a template what we need to do here is uh, uh, check under masters and make sure we create our own title block or our own sheet settings for this demonstra demonstration <laughs> sorry i would leave it under this architect default um, title block so the a01.1 ground flow sheet it will use let me change under the properties to use the a1 landscape master instead of a2 i'll set it to that and then if we go back you would see now we have that right so i can move this to the center let's just move this to the center here see as you could see whatever changes or whatever activities that will happen on the model side and the view side it will be automatically updated to our layout that's the best practice uh, ladies and gentlemen the idea of the architect and the idea of this workflow is to make sure you spend more time in modeling and then the documentation part you automate it so if you model well you'll save more enormous amount of time doing your project documentation for your construction and other uh, purposes so this is important so let's go back to our ground once we have all the settings in place there are a lot of settings that you can do you've got if you go here under file and then info you could come and set the project info as well and and fill in this information that is required about your project these are the the, the best practices like i said that needs to be drilled in everyone uh, who is using a kit because this information is interlinked or uh, uh, cross referenced if i can say they are intertwined in a in a manner that even the layouts here access this information okay so let's hit okay for that you can go and do it uh, in your own all right so to start this project let's go to the example or the reference which is this project uh, you see we have uh, the mesh and uh, we're gonna start by assembling by creating the structure the roof structure we also have the MAP um, activities that we're going to do because of uh, like I said because of this creation of the extractor uh, chimney for our kitchen okay so what we need to do now is to start by doing the base which is the terrain so i'll go through the under the view map there is a side view let's open the side view would have uh, all this information i'll pick just uh let me do this uh, for example go to the uh, documents and i'll just trace off ah, but it's fine i won't trace it off what needs to be done here is to take the or select this control lines 
in order for us to reference or to create uh, exactly the mesh as it is in this project i'll hit ctrl c if you want to copy across the archicad files you just hit ctrl c and then i would go back to my my project and then paste it here right remember what i did i did a mistake because i'm pasting it under ground view even if it's not selected here but you could see on the tabs which view is it open there by uh, seeing the highlighted with white color so i'll hit cancel and then come here under view map and then let's open the site um a view there we go you would see it's a side view because of its scale we have a scale of one is 200 here and it, it uses a layer combination of a site so if you want to access the layer settings you can come here quickly and then click it will open the layer settings you could see we have a specific a specific layer combination just for the site activities all right so let's control our v to paste or just right click and then paste this material we've copied from that site and then i can just position it on the center of my elevation markers just like that and then click outside the my queue to complete the pasting process once you are done with your controls i can now uh, produce a mesh okay let's activate the design tool palette and then find your mesh tool there and activate it i'm going to use a geometry method of polygon because i want to draw as if i'm drawing a polyline or a line in my drawing so i'll activate this and then once i'm done i will just draw something like that just draw something like that i'll make sure this uh, mesh doesn't go all the way or beyond the control lines just for the purpose of modeling yeah, it can be something like that all right i'm pretty happy with the, the results and then i need to take off this fill as you see what i can do is open its settings and let's find the floor plan and section to get rid of the fill. So if you scroll down this bar, you'd find uh, there is a cover fill. There is a grass cover fill there. Let's act unactivate it so that we can get rid of it. Hit OK to apply it. There we go. We have now a clean and plain um, mesh. Let's transfer this information of the contours, the information of the contours to our mesh, right? so to do that you have to activate your mesh tool from the tool palette and then also select the the mesh are we together and then once you are done once you've selected the mesh and then the tool is active on the tool palettes you're good to go so what what, what you need to do is to activate the magic wand tool or magic wand command by clicking and holding your spacebar key in your keyboard and then once you've um, changed your cursor to this magic wand you can click on each of these uh, lines and then make sure you fit to fit to user ridges okay then hit okay then do the same to this one fit to user ridges lastly to this control and then do the same as well if we check on 3d we have now something in our 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 environment okay so this is basically what we have i can go back to the side plane and then get rid of the lines let's get rid of the poly lines the splines and then so to select all of them i could just go one by one like that or i could come here because it's made up of a spline tool i could come here under documents and then activate the spline tool and then control a to select all of this and then i can delete from the keyboard right so that's basically what we have now we have the contours actual contours from the from the mesh or from the terrain so i would go back to uh select it and then let's now um adjust the value for this the heights for our contours okay so this this one will be i'll start with this let's click on the point just just one point 
just one of the points is fine you can click on this one or that one or it depends on it doesn't matter so i'll click on on one of the points it will select or highlight all the points for that particular control you could see now we don't have the control the control points selected on these two control lines we only have for this one right so that make sure that you are in the right uh, process by seeing uh, that so once you've clicked the one of the points on the pet palette you would have uh, these tools we want to activate the elevate mesh tool once you elevate it you have the mesh point heights we have the mesh point heights um, window and we need to key in the height of this uh, uh, control in this case i would say 1.2 and then i'm going to apply to all the points because right remember i've selected only one point so i need to transfer this information across all the points so i will say apply to all and then hit ok so that information is being transferred as you could see now the mesh is being triangulated to form a, a height so if you come on 3d you would see we have now a bump to our mesh like that okay very interesting so let's go back to the side uh, to the plan to side plan and then we'll move next we'll move to the next uh control let's select that like i said it has to be only the points that have been selected for that particular uh, control and then i'll click one of the points for this i'm going to make it to be let me say two meters in this case i'm just um assuming or come up with just numbers but in in, in an actual uh world you would have a quantity surveyor and you have the sorry you have a surveyor and then you have this information available is just you to follow what's in the information provided by the surveyor and key in the information that is accurate for this demonstration i'm just using my own assumptions to create a, a topography for example for this project then i'll hit ok to apply to all and then do the last um, control let's do the same as well for this i'm going to make it uh, to be maybe 300 uh, it 300 apply to all let's check on 3d how is yeah so 300 no i think 300 is small we can uh, say 500 if you check on 3d it's been pumped I think I can uh, increase this one as well. So let's make this one. Uh, there's this. There's an ideal, a perfect uh, terrain that I want to create. So be mindful with my changes for this. Let's make this uh, 1.5 to have something like this. If yes, I want to create something like 1.5 is too small. Let's make it. Uh, 1.8 yeah yeah something like that okay it looks impressive it looks impressive I don't know why here this point is left because uh, we we can right we pick it up manually by clicking on the point and then choose elevation mesh let's see no, it won't work okay it's fine so that's basically what we have in terms of our mesh and uh, we can make it smooth because uh, we don't want to see these triangulated lines in our 3ds and our drawings as you could see now for the plan view or the side plan we have this information that is not needed you cannot represent your topography like this so we need to select it and then open in settings to get rid of that i would start with the for the floor plan for the drawings you need to come here under floor plan and section and then scroll down this bar you would see the ridge selection instead of by default to come as show all ridges ridges they means those triangulated lines so, we're gonna get rid of it by changing this to show user defined ridges right and then for the 3d 
we can we come here under model under 3d appearance we are going to say all ridges to be smooth okay then we hit ok to apply the changes you could see now we have a clean controls even though they have value they are clean and then if you come to the 3d as well we're going to achieve the same feel as you could see it's nice okay so our building is going to be positioned right here it will act as if it's been anchored to this uh, ground it's part of this we want to make a feeling that our building is emerging from the ground instead of being imposed to the ground it has to be part of this ground all right so let's go back to our site now we've created our mesh what we need to do um, is to open the ground floor under floor plans make sure you collapse this ceiling plans because they are necessary at this stage I'll collapse everything to keep my file structure clean I have to and to avoid making some sloppy uh, um, activities so you need to organize yourself right so let's open the ground floor the ground floor we still have this uh, mesh we can control what what we want to see in most cases you don't want to see your controls your mesh in a ground floor plan you want your plan to be very um, distinct and uh, it doesn't want to show you don't want to show the mesh you will come later to this issue and solve it all right so if you go back to our project let's go back to our our example and open the ground floor you would see we have a 9 by 6.7 a building so we need to start by creating a, a plan or a, a, a platform for that so let's go back and uh, we come here to create a platform for our building because you could see we have a sloppy ground let's see how we can create a, a platform I'm gonna use a design tool called slab okay activate that tool and then for now because I don't want to dwell much on to details of creating composite as you know slabs use composite to create a layering of materials in this case I'm going to just to use a, a basic structure here under structures I'll click here and then make sure the structure is basic and then the material will be just a normal concrete structural material and make sure the reference plane location line is at the top because we are going to position our building our, our slab sorry our floor slab from zero 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 so that means it has to sit right on the top of the zero zero is going to be on the top of our slab so if you use this one your zero zero will be at the bottom of your slab so it makes sense right so once you are done with that I'll come here and draw a rectangle let's use a rectangle method to place this I'll draw a rectangle of uh, nine meters by six point seven which is the footprint of my building so you can now push it back somewhere there and then check on 3d that's basically what we have we need to select the slab and make sure it's sitting on the right location so if you scroll down in your info box here you see our slab is sitting on zero so we need to reduce um, we can we want zero to be the reference point or the reference height so that means we need to change um, the offset of our of our mesh I've selected our mesh the offset from from the base should be negative 500 something like this now you could see we had a bit of your slab is a bit exposed and at the same time sunken or buried to your 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 buried to your your terrain that's basically what I want so I'm going to use this slab to create a hole to this mesh so I'm going to select the mesh first and then right click to use a tool called solid element operation under connect solid element operation and then uh, by default I will add the selected elements to as a target right we need an operator which is going to be our floor slab 
let's pick our flow slab and then add it as an operator so now we have a target and then the operator you could see the target is one the operator is one that's the quantity and then let's come here under the operation we want to use an operation called subtraction with upward extrusion because we want to um, cut a hole to the upward extrusion based on the relationship between the, the slab and the mesh you see if you're using this you have to use the upward extrusion because you want to eliminate this top part material the top material on top of, that is on top of our slab so and then you can say execute so we can get rid of this window and then you could see now we have this hole we created and then we have a flat base or a platform for our building so that's basically what i wanted to achieve okay so from here let's go back to our ground we are now moving on to creating our structure so before we create our structure which is basically mainly our structure is anchored to the roof the, 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 the whole roof as you could see the design so let's go back to our project so that you can see what i'm trying to explain here so if we ac activate this on 3d we have we have uh, this as a wall plus a roof as well and then for this side it's better because it's being divided into two we have this um, member and then we have a wall here so i'm going to have a wall the side that will ultimately add windows and then if you move to this um, side as well we have two walls that are from the first floor and then the ground floor that's the only walls that we need to create and then other walls are partition walls from the inside as you could see we have uh, this there let's go back to our our project and create that so i'm gonna go back and then uh, let's say we're gonna activate the wall tool and make sure again we don't want to do a complex um, composites for this wall so i just want to use a basic structure and then make sure the material we could choose the material if you want or just go for brick structural right and then i can draw a wall based on this it's going to sit on top of the slab is it on top or on the edge no it's going to be on the edge of this uh, of the slab okay so because i have to draw a wall from the side and then the side i'm going to change the construction method to be a continuous or more like a polyline kind of uh, method and then let's scroll down here the width the thickness of this should be three meters i mean 300 mi uh, millimeters because i'm using millimeters it's fine so i would draw it from here but before you place it make sure the reference line it's important the reference line of your wall is important right now it's in the outside it's in the outside it depends on the on the direction you are taking if you are going clockwise you need it from the outside if you are going anti-clockwise it's going to be on the the inside so i would you can also change it while we are still in the process so for example if i click here and then i make sure and then I, if i had to change this to be outside i can just come here and then say 10 to the outside just like that and then i can draw to place these two walls right click to hit ok to complete your placement there we go we need this as well uh, at the top view okay I'll select this and pick this wall control C to copy and then move to the next um, uh, flow let's open that and we're going to control V and paste it here so by default to pick the original uh, position from the ground floor so I can click outside the mercury to complete we don't need this side of the wall because we will have the mesh so what I will do out uh, suspend the groups because if you use the change method or the polyline method of placing a wall it will automatically group them so you need to ungroup this by alt g or come here and suspend groups okay i can now delete this wall there we go so if you check on 3d we basically have uh, this kind of uh geometry okay i see we have an issue here these walls are not sitting in the correct position maybe 
they're not sitting in the correct position what i'll do i can fix that but i'll show you the best method of paste copy pasting let's get rid of this and uh, let's go back to the ground floor the best method let's select this two because we just need this two let's hit ctrl c okay and then if we come here actually needs to ask us where exactly do you want to position this so if we say ctrl v and then we can right click on the i'm sorry before we paste it i'm sorry about that let's undo before i paste it i'll need to choose this ground as a reference you can come here and activate that and then click on the arrow to choose the reference or the story that you want to reference for this case is the is the ground and then i'll hit ctrl v to paste that information now i can be able to see if this information is sitting on the right position but definitely here it's not showing the right position i'll move this back to the perfect position as you could see so if we click outside the mark and then check on 3d it should be fine that's basically what we are having okay i think you could see the sitting of this wall is not on the right area because it's been positioned on the center we need to position it from like this one this one is position ah, they are all positioned on the center we want them to be outside so i would say select all the walls even this one instead of using the reference location on the center use it from the outside okay so now we could see the reference line sitting right in the inside or in the edge of our floor slab just like that for both sides and this side we will need to move it yeah so that means this slab and this wall are not well positioned what i would do i would do it just in 3d here and then control d pick it from this corner and then dock it to the corner of your walls now you are pretty sure that everything sits on top of another as you could see from this uh wall okay just like that so what you need to do is to drop down our wall to the foundation levels so i'll select this and then that wall by adding selection is holding shift instead of having our wall starting right on zero i would say they should go beyond that i will make sure it's minus 500 something like that okay i could it would depend on the size or on the depth of our foundation this wall could go even to an extent of one meter or 1000 millimeters it depends okay right so that's basically what we've produced so far and then we'll see we have glittering of materials we have glittering of materials for the walls and the the mesh we don't want to see this information this needs to be fixed before we continue because once it's not being fixed you're going to repeat the same um, uh, mistakes and then it gets accumulative and then becomes a huge mess to the entire project so some of these things is very difficult for you to go back and try fix them once they are they are many so it's better you you kill the cat right straight away so what i'll do i'll select the mesh because it's the target i want to subtract it from the from the wall so i'll right click and then bring connect to open the solid element operation so like i said by default the selected element will be added as a target so make sure before you bring in the element operation it's a way to speed up the process you are being smart because you know you have to at the end of the day you are going to select all the elements and add them as a target either or or operator so one now i need to select just the slab i mean the wall to add it as an operator this time around i'm going to use subtraction because i just want to subtract what's affecting the walls okay so again hit execute now you would see we have that we could have uh, created this once because this wall also needs to be uh, fixed so i'll add the target as a mesh and then this wall is going to act as an operator and then hit execute all right so now we have a clean connection between our walls and our structural walls and uh, our mesh so we can get rid of this window just like that okay now i'm not worried about the surfaces or the materials materials i can come back and do the materials once 
clearly it's important because you need to follow a systematic way of creating your model remember what i said we model well in order for us to reduce time enormous time we spent doing the construction documentation or documentation of this project so we're going to try by all means to be perfect in our model because it's going to be a base of the information that we're going to extract during the documentation process so if you don't get your model right you're going to have a horrible construction process or construction documentation um, process because you'll be dealing with so many issues to address and it will be overwhelming because you let them accumulate and become a huge huge uh, error okay i hope this um, sinks in sinks in because um, i know i've made this mistake a lot of time and going forward i had to come up with a strategy it's just it's not a strategy it's a dis being disciplined to to carry out the works in according to how they're supposed to be done Okay, so from here now we have the base of our our project both the, the the walls and then the slabs so we need to introduce the envelope that will come as that um, intricate structure and uh, and uh, uh, cover it up so we'll go back to our our reference project and then uh, what we need to do is to open that elevation no, it's not the it's not the one that I'm looking at. Um, it's this one. Right click on it and open with current settings. That's basically what I want. I want to create uh, this uh, mat uh, material. So we need to see from the zero zero this one at which height is it is. So it's around one point nine which is fine i'll copy this for the sake of this image i'll copy this um 2d lines for it's a sketch of that features you could create your own feature just uh for the sake of you um, being creative you can now modify this kind of uh features and create your own so i would come here and then go back let's go to the ground and paste that information there click outside the mark queue to complete the pasting i copied this um, material from the elevation view but that doesn't mean you can produce it on the elevation view because we're using a shell tool it's impossible to create or to use a shell tool in elevation arcade doesn't allow you to do that of yet i don't know maybe in future versions you do you'll be having um, an ability or capability to place your shell on elevation because it will make a lot of sense it will um, improve our efficiency to the project so we have to do it on the plan view so i will activate the shell tool and then under the shell settings you would find we have different geometry uh, for our placing of our shell we have the extruded one we have the revolved and the detailed one in this case uh, of ours we want to have this and then extrude it along the length of our building so definitely this is a, an appropriate or a tool that makes sense to our situation and then one thing that we need to change is under construction method these are what these are geometry method under construction method we're going to choose the detailed uh, method and then you could create a prof a composite for your shell as well that's the reason why i like using shell sometimes for this kind of intricate uh, structures because they are parametric right i like using other tools like morph or complex profiles yeah complex profiles they're also parametric but with not degree that you would get from using a shell tool so this time around i'm gonna just use the basic um structure and then the material will be under reinforced concrete it's fine and then once you are done you could activate the magic wand tool activate the magic wand tool by pressing and holding your space bar key and then click on the line you want to place in this case remember the length of our building we said is nine meters that's the extrusion length of our our shell 
and then hit ok there we go but yeah that's how it is and then do the same to the side as well nine meters is fine and then boom we now have these two uh, gentlemen I think they're supposed to be inside right the reference location for these two has to be inside so what I'll do I'll select both of them and by selecting this one and then add a selection another selection by hold shift and then click on that let's come here under let's find the reference line which is this area here we're going to flip it to the inside there we go perfect so let's bring this closer to the elevation markers so that we can i think yeah this one let's just put it here put it somewhere there all right so i'm going to open this elevation in order for me to if we check on 3d sorry guys before i continue this is how this is being placed but it needs to be upright we need to rotate this upright so you could do it on 3d that one i'm not sure we can i'm not sure we could do a free rotate here let's just try it's going to be tricky uh, the best way is to do it on elevation so like i said let me select this elevation select that and then right click open with current view settings there we go and then i'm going to select everything like that then control e to rotate i'm going to rotate it from this point draw a line like that and then rotate it vertically like so okay and then let's go back to the plan view so it has changed we only see one lap because of its position so if you come here under the the first story you now see both of them there so let's select both of them and drag them by Control d in your keyboard drag them to next to the building we need to rotate them to be along the length of the building Control e again and then rotate them horizontally like that okay and then we can move them to the position something like that let's see on 3d okay this side has to be on this side so we need to mirror it so to mirror it is going to be on the let's do it on the elevation we could also do it here if we want Control m to mirror and then oh sorry let's mirror use this mirror mirror it horizontal like that okay and then i'll drag this to this point and then check on 3d basically we have something like that we can position nicely on the elevation as well let's go back to the uh, plane view and uh, select this elevation we already had it open here it's just to come there no it's not the one yeah it is the one and then we can remember we said this has to start from zero start from zero by 1.9 so i would draw a guideline of a 1.1 1.9 uh, dimension so to draw a guideline you could use guidelines here uh, or you could say alt l to draw a guideline so to be like just a, a line tool i'll draw a line like 1.9 height there we go and then i can select these two guys and control d i would use the bottom of this feature here and then drag it to align it with the guideline so to reference or align it that we need to uh, shift and hold so that you're able to you can move your cursor across to the line without affecting your if i leave the the shift you see now this is not being restricted orthogonal or vertical so i need to restrict it vertically like that and then i can use the guideline like that. okay now i'm pretty sure everything sits where i want and uh, you could see 
this is the perfect location of these features but we have this uh, stuck it has to continue all the way to the foundation just like we did for our walls so I'm going to select this and then click on this point once you click on the point of a reference line you would get these different tools to um, transform your element so I would um, activate the move node and then I can and then make sure I move it along the axis of that I don't make sure I make sure I don't disturb its line so that its angle so it has to go all the way to the ground like that so by so doing it won't affect the shape or the geometry of that element I hope it makes sense I hope I am explaining it the way you could understand if you don't make sure you go to the comment section let me know as for now what things that needs to be clarified I would be waiting for every comment to respond so make sure you, you bring those questions queries um, to the comment section okay so we're pretty much good in terms of the positioning of our feature if you check on 3d that's basically what you have right so what we need to do is to extend our feature to cover the thickness of our slab of our walls sorry right let's do that let's go back here and then make sure come here and click on this and activate make sure you click on the reference line horizontal line like that and then um, pick the edit extrusion length so you want to increase the extrusion length maybe let's make it uh, 9.450 9.450 something like that and do the same to the other side but this one I'll just reference with uh, this one so we need to also do it on this side let's increase this to be 9.750 9.750 and then i'll select this the other one and then reference with with this one All right so i now have this kind of projections from my from my walls as you could see now is the magic time we came to the moment uh, of doing some magic to clean up our our structure okay so to start with i'll select all the targets all the elements that needs to be trimmed off we're going to use solid element operation to to craft this so i would select this wall needs to be uh, extracted this one needs to be also subtracted this slab is part of the whole system and then we have this wall again if i right click to connect and bring solid element operation window we have in total four targets which is the walls and the slab okay so i'm, I'm going to select the two features as an operator there are two and then i'm going to use subtraction with upward extrusion why because if you if we check all these elements needs to be extracted are on the up side of our shell so i would say upward extrusion and then hit execute so it would clean up our structure now we have a nice and clean um, geometry okay as you could see even our slab sits on the right position for this one i would say let's change its thickness to 100 because for a mezzanine floor it's too much okay so 100 is fine we can also drop the height of it to be let's drop the height of it to be instead of three meters as it is to be 2.9 because 2.9 is fine because of it's a mezzanine so to do that i'm going to close off the solid element operation window and then come here under the <coughs> the project browser under floor plans or your stories you can hit control 7 to open the story settings or right click on one of the story there and then find the story settings or like i said hit control 7 and then from here what we want is to change the elevation to be 2.9 that will be the height of my mezzanine floor so for this one i don't think it's a problem because it's just for roof and i could label it mezzanine 
I could label it mezzanine floor. This will be the roof. And then hit OK. Wait for it to adjust. Now we have our slab adjusted to 2.9. Two okay perfect so now we need to move forward we are going to do the facade of the this area but before we do the facade i want us to focus on the inside first to close it off let's go back to the ground and uh, on the ground floor if you look at uh, our our reference project let's open the ground floor there is a uh, the back room uh, the back room stuff which is this toilet that's around 1.5 by 3.5 so we need to create this only partition this side you can play around and do the, the shelving that designer shelving on this side so that's the only side that needs to be uh, placed a wall so let's go back and do our partition wall. so I'm going to pick parameters of this by by holding out in your keyboard and then click in one of the walls and then instead of using a 300 because it's an internal wall we're going to use half of that which is 1.150 right but before i place it i want to have a guideline here that to measure the distance so i would control our alt l to draw that guideline of 1.5 and then this side is around 2.5 as well oh sorry i wanted to draw a guideline i'll add l and then we're going to draw this to be oh sorry i want a guideline let's say alt l draw this to be 2.5 that's the guidelines of our the, the size of the space that you want to draw or to make or create so i will activate the previous command which is setting up the 150 wall by clicking on ww it's a shortcut of repeating the last operator or the last operation which is most especially it's specific for the tools only i'm not sure with other with other commands like for example the last command i did is for the guidelines but it didn't pick it it was picking only the tools so that's the only thing that i know about that so i'm going to draw a wall that will be 2.5 then hit ok sorry I could have continued to the side and then we need to change the reference location to the outside like that and then right click to place it there ok so this needs to be moved to the position no but this one is fine and then this also needs to be here okay normally you would want your reference line to be on the same on the same location so if i select this the location line is in the inside this the reference line is in the outside we need to turn it inside and then we can manually move this to the right measurement so that's the best practice guys you want to have your reference line on the the reference line location on the same or reference line to be on the same location same applies to these ones they has to be on the loca same location okay so that's basically what we have we have um, i don't think this is too small let's see what the project uh, reference project says 3.5 instead of 2.5 so i would alt l to make a guideline a command and then like i said this speed should be 3.5 and then I can control D and move this to the right measurements. Select both of these tools and then use the intersect command from the top uh, menu. And then you're good to go. Okay, so if we check on 3D, we have that space. We have that space we created. All right. So it's the time for us to do the the curtain wall for the facade of or for the entrance of our building okay but once we've created that we'll also do the roof part 
we need to have we have a slab here that will cover up that but before we do that let's just place it so that we reference the height of our curtain wall with it so i'll activate the slab i mean the, the roof uh, uh view and as you could see now we have this in place so i would activate the slab too and then i'll draw that slab just like that i think this side has to stop on the on the wall side let's just make it on the inside but practically it has to sit on top of the wall that's practically something like that okay something like this and uh, this can be let's select it and change its thickness to the hundred because it's just a roof okay let's see ah, nice and we have an issue here because of the wall that we just placed it's encroaching with the surface of our roof our, our roof so we need to select that wall right click to bring solid element operation and select this as an operator i'm going to use subtraction with upward extrusion again to execute that so that i can trim off my wall like that okay so it's fine so now we need to change uh, the i mean not to change but to place our facade of the building right so what i'll do let's go back to the ground floor and then on the ground floor we need to activate our shell tool let's come here i mean our curtain tool sorry activate the curtain tool and uh, normally i would open its settings before i place everything and then if we check under scheme settings we would have uh, uh, by default under the favorites we have different types of of schemes that are available here okay different types of settings that are available there so for this one i can modify this to get whatever i want right so what i need to do here is to eliminate the third column which is this right so it's going to be on the b sides so the b sides instead of uh, one and two okay i'll get rid of this by get rid of b and then i'm going to remove it to remain with something like that okay and then uh, i would need uh, uh, this panel to be less 600 i'll make it 200 something like that yes and then uh, i'll get rid of another panel which is this one let's get rid of it so that you can have something like this okay and then if you come here under frames you'd see let's say let's start with the boundary we have uh, different types of frames to use under boundary as you could see the built-in is always the go-to i always use the uh, that one and then under the moulin the moulin they are hidden because they are behind the panels so that means it's fine so let's see how we can do i think the best way is to place it and then you can come and track the settings and adjust it the way you want to achieve that i'll hit ok and then once i'm here i'll start to draw my curtain wall the geometry method will be just this single uh, placement i'll pick this point then draw to this side because of the slanting of this uh, shell or this roof structure this element uh, the roof is good i mean the it has to go all the way to here but this is subject to change because i can adjust it on the 3d let's check on 3d we have something like this and we need to set this to go all the way i'll click one of the points and then bring it all the way to the height of our our slab something like that 
then we have exactly what I wanted to, us to achieve. You could see we have the boundary for our elements. Yes, it looks great for now. And one thing that we can change is the number of, uh, or is the distance between, or the, the, the width of the panels. So if you go back and come here under schemes, instead of this panel has to be 150. 150 is super fine for for the entrance. We can change the height. No, no, no. I think it's a supposed to be 150, 1.5. Sorry. Yeah, this is supposed to be 1.5 and then the height the height should be 2. Point, it has to cater the height of our door. So let's make it 2.1. Okay, and then this will be 200. This I want to trim off the slab. But for now because we don't have a slab, we can just leave it till around 400. Okay? and then we can hit ok to apply the changes get something like that we'll get something like this or we can also change instead of having this i think let's make it 300 not bad not bad it's subject to change you can change it all day long okay Let's do the magic now. So we want this to be inside our our region created by the these two elements. Region created by these two elements. So there are a couple of ways of doing that. We could use solid element operation to try to do the same as we did for this wall at the back here. But Let's just do it so that you can see the pros and cons of it. So I'll select that, right click and connect solid element operation and then pick these two as a operator. Use subtract with upward extrusion and then hit execute. So that's basically what you get. But the problem here we are getting is because you know, you see now our boundary. We have to have the profile or the transom or the boundary of our curtain all going all the way around that shape or the region created by these two giant features to achieve that let's undo our solid element operation we're going to use um, elevation let's west elevation right and then let's edit let's select this instead of using the edit the settings dialog we're gonna use this edit button click on it and then uh, let's activate the the scheme grid right and then switch off the frame and the panel the junction and the other accessories just to remain with the scheme grid so once you're done you can select your grid like that the boundary and then click on the point move it to the position like that okay and then we're gonna do the same convert this to an arc click on this point add a new node and then place it there just to refine or define the geometry of our curtain wall i'll do the same this side pick this move it to here and then uh, add a point there i'll add a point here and then come here add another point oh sorry sorry about that i need to be accurate I could see they are not in line. There is a gap that is being created by this. It should be somewhere because it's, it's curving. Maybe I need to um, position this to here. Okay. And then add another point to there. So make sure you are accurate. You have to zoom in so that you can see clearly what you are doing. Add another point. Add another one. Let's do the same here. Do the 
the same day. Another one there. Up until you you are done with the geometry of of your element. Perfect. Once you are done, you can go back and activate all these features. And then hit execute. I mean exit exit the edit mode. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now we could see we have a boundary. If a member, a frame that will frame up our our curtain along the edges of this. So if we check on 3D, click outside. So that's basically how it is. We could see it's all the way like that. Right? So this slab has to move back because the map is a mezzanine floor. So I'll come here under mezzanine. It has to out it has to overlook once you have to overlook okay so I'll bring this back oh sorry select the slab it's a challenge to select because there are a lot of elements on top of each other so you have to use tap 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 um, in your keyboard to highlight that so I'll bring it back by 3.5 no, so, let me make it 1.5 yes it's subject to change but uh, it's fine for now and then if we check on 3d there we go we have our slab uh, back because it's going to be accessed by a ladder from from the ground okay so that's basically how you can create your your curtain wall so I need to create an access now and open I will select this and then edit once you hit edit you can select this panel specifically this panel that's where we're going to change this panel to instead of a built-in cp panel we're going to change it to a door something like that and then once you've changed to a door we need to open the door settings and uh, i want to access the curtain or door settings here make sure the 2d is full and then the 3d also it's a full resolution so that i can it's the side hang it's fine let's move on to the next page which is for the leaf another page for the leaf frame let's make it 40 and then move here the handles i'm gonna change it to something like that and uh, i like to override the 2d symbolic display Normally, I would select override model options and then change the the symbol display line to a dashed line, and then change this to a 0 0.15 millimeter line. Okay, so that's basically it, and then I'll hit OK. Should be fine. The lines, 2D lines, are not changed. I don't know why. I hate that orange line. So I'll come here and then set this to color two all of them okay and then hit okay to apply the changes right so there we go you have a door there you can hit exit if you feel the door is too wide you can go back to the settings dialog where you can change the width instead of 1.5 maybe to a meter be something like that now the door has been moved significantly to the side but here we have the height of our our we want to have the position of the door somewhere here what we can do we can select this i think let's go back and change maybe to 1.2 yes and then once we are here we can hit edit then let's pick parameters of this by alt and hold and click on that and then Control and alt to inject it to this panel and then I can pick this panel uh, settings and then inject to this so that you can have my uh, my door relocated to this area okay so that's basically how I've done it okay so now we have basically the shell of our project being placed it's in it's in position 
what you need to do is uh, maybe before we move on to other elements like placing the doors or openings windows and doors and furniture layout let's focus on maybe changing the materials first okay i'm gonna change the material first the surfaces i'll start with this guy junky uh, features let's um open its settings under settings what i need to override is this feature the opposite surface and then let's make this paint glossy white the the top i'll change this to be a um, let's find a roof and see what what will come the roof and then um, corrugated sheet mat uh, let's hit ok something like that it makes sense okay and then i can change the material to something that will represent uh, that material we can, we can we can decide with the material we can still achieve this on i think it should be on steel let's change this to be a steel structure okay yeah so that uh, it becomes something like that perfect and then let's get inside and then set these two walls open in settings set these two walls to be under the models set the material to be our override the surfaces and set to be paint glossy white and then make sure you link all the surfaces to change them all and then you want also the inside of this uh, wall to be the same same applies to the top part so i'm going to open in settings and then i'm going to change it on the side of the reference line and make sure it's paint paint glossy white there we go it's starting to make sense as you can see now we have everything so for this wall because we're going to have a kitchen um, installed on the side what we need to do is to, we're going to have a, a layer another skin for the plastering or the tiling sorry for that for that part for now i'll leave it the way it is because we're going to yet to apply the 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 tiling okay so that's how it is and um, i would like to make sure the pens for every element is up to date for example i have my slab i'll pick all the slab let's pick the parameter of this by alt and then control a to select all the slabs what i need to do is to come here under floor plan and section and then i'm going to override this to be uh pen one they're going to be at pen one all of them okay but for cutting uh, let's go back again but for cut section for cut line is going to be a thicker pen which is uh, 0 0.35 i think is fine because i already now thinking of cutting a section which is the documentation part of it of if you have this orientation if your mindset is like this you won't get wrong in terms of uh, that and then this is going to be i'm going to change the surface of the slab to be a, a wood i'm going to activate or override only this by saying you're going to be a, a wood finish wood oak or something something like that and then i'm going to have my down lights there okay this two i'm going to change its um also the pens to be cut should be a pen 21 which is 0 0.35 and then the remaining are going to be 0 0.13 which is 13 the lightest pen for the cover fill let's use uh, the color 2 okay you could see now our building is starting to take shape okay and then let's come here i think this is this looks heavy what i need to do is to select my 
on curtain wall right click bring connect element solid element operation and then use this as a operator i'll use this as an operator or versa fee this will be a target and then this this will be the operator and then hit subtraction it will clean up this joint like that and then i can also do the same to this side this will be the operator and then this two will be the target and then hit subject okay so that it can have a groove to the to the element like that construction wise that's how it's supposed to be done okay and then for the curtain wall instead of having uh, let's open the settings i want to have all the material to be equal so this will be also a main panel instead of a distinct panel right something like that that's what i want okay so normally we would have a slab a steps here for the entrance so what i'll do go back to the ground and uh, we're going to uh, activate the slab by taking picking parameter of the existing slab and draw a slab of 500 by 1.5 oh it's small i can stretch it manually to be somewhere here and then you can also go out by 7 uh, 750 like that so on 3d you have something like that okay and it has to drop down a bit by negative 200 maybe 150 something like that i think 100 is fine yeah we have an issue here for the connection for the joint between the um, floor and the curtain wall so like i said we i'll select the the floor slab and op bring solid element operation and then this is going to be the operator i'm going to trim off the groove here practically that's how it's been done so that you can have that you can close off this so if you are to hide a layer of my curtain wall you would see we have this continuous groove along the elements okay for all the elements are being affected so let's control l and bring all the layers right okay so we move on to the other items so i think furniture layout we're going to do the furniture layout, the, sorry the openings first door openings and i mean window openings and doors and then we can come and do the furniture layout so we are left with uh, yeah let's open our ground and start with the this area i'll activate it should be just a normal door activate the door tool open its settings and what we need to do i'm going to come here under hinged door settings and pick the grid i'm going to use this hv grid change the handle to something that you like and then click on this arrow to access other parameters but before you click that i think you need to set the 3d detail level to full resolution and the 2d detail level to 1 is to 50 okay and then you can click on this arrow to bring other parameters that we want to access we want to access the model attributes where we are going to change the pens i mean the surfaces for the frame let's activate this i like i'll give it it has to be on this i'll leave it under uh, under wood material so what i need to do is to change the main, main uh, pens to be pen 2 right and then i'll come back here on the parameters go to floor plane like i said make sure the reveal is always and then the leaf pen should be two 
that and to even though this you can override it while well, once you've placed it I don't, I don't like to use the fills i'll get rid of the fills and then hit ok if you come here you can place your, your door like that so we still have some lines that are on orange so i'll go back and uh what i need to do i can come here under floor plan and section and then override the pens and change this to pens to that and then let's go back to hinge settings what i need to do is uh, under opening lines and override that like i did for the curtain door curtain hole door and make sure it's dashed and this is that hit okay perfect so that's basically what i have now as the windows let's activate the window tool and then open in settings normally by default you would have uh, you have this uh, window what i need to do is to change its opening type i want it to be a top hang i want it to be a top hang the 3d detail level should be full as 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 well as the 2d detail level to be 1 is to 50. hit okay and then i have i have a window here another window there another one for for the toilet okay by just clicking that so this i want to, to be a display window now make the width to be 1.5 and then let's come here select all of them and then set the pens to be i'll, I'll come here in the floor plan section and override the pen styles to two oh, i thought i've selected all of this set this to to two okay if we check on 3d there we go what i want is to make sure this windows uh let's make the height be maybe 800 and then the height the height will be the i'll move it by picking this points and then move it underside this feature like that and then the height is still you can make it 500 and then move it back to underside something like this yes so that you can overlook when you are outside it will give the impression that you are so normally you would have again a, a gutter here that will collect water that will be seeping into that will be flowing down down the the, the 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 terrain so you have a gutter between the wall and the terrain it's not a big problem same applies to the side as well okay but that's basically the windows and this side also needs to be 500 they're supposed to be on the same height yeah okay so that's basically what we have in terms of the openings all right let's move on and do the layout um the object furniture and uh, i'll start first with the the kitchen all right so if you look at our project reference for the sake of this demonstration i'll copy the kitchen arrangement from this project because uh we don't have time this video is no it's no more than 30 one hour 30 minutes so we'll try as much as you can to bring it down so i'll select all these elements like that to to kill time Control c to copy and then let's come back to our project and control v to paste let's paste it center here then i'll use this edge of all this and place it there something like that okay you can uh, move this to the edge 
click outside to complete so that's basically what we have click here to do that you can fix all the discrepancies came came from the pasting process all right something like that okay so this will be the step later if we want to check the settings of it let's open its uh its settings we have used this wall mounted ladder there's nothing special about it in terms of its parameters uh, i just used the default settings so if you check uh, on the 3d that's basically what you have and then what we need to do i think is to set all the object heights so this will be at zero okay no it's fine it is fine no, everything is fine everything is fine what we need to do is you change the surface so i forgot to change the surface of this floor slab override only the top surface make sure it's tile let's find the tile you can come back here under options and element element attributes surfaces and increase the size of this if you want to increase the size if you feel it's small let's come here under texture oh sorry we need to find the right yeah here it is it's been selected here so it's around it's roughly it's roughly 1.2 let's make it two meters both and then hit ok it will increase the size okay so for this area we need a tiling like i said we need a tiling for this wall in order for it to be so we can override the surface of this or we i think this needs to go all the way to the corner there. or we can uh, draw a wall a thin wall let's just do that i'll do that i'll pick this wall let's pick this wall Control shift d to move a copy here and change the thickness of this to be 50 and uh, open its settings set the material the surface to be a tile because it's going to be the same as the floor then okay i'll get rid of these windows because we don't need them and then i will turn the reference look uh, line location to be on the outside or the other side and then i can move back this to there now we've blocked our windows in 3d you see we've blocked our windows like that so we need to fix that i'm going to use a, an opening uh, tool let's come here under design troopers and activate the opening tool then i'm going to place an opening there place another one here so and then i can select these openings pick one of the points and then i would use this to stretch the width do the same to the other side and then i know the height of this is 500 okay and then i will do the same or i can pick parameters of this and then place it on uh, the opening let's take adjust its position to here and then i'm going to select this uh, wall to bring it to front so that it can be like that so maybe the entire kitchen needs to move forward by let's select all the kitchen i'll group because we need to group them and then move it right on the edge of the tile okay so i now select the two openings and change it i don't like the way they've been represented on the floor so I'll change the symbol to be no symbol. 
hit OK. So if we check now, it's basically this. We can also change the pens to be uh, true for everything. Okay, and if you check on 3D, we might need to position our the height. There we go. Select both of them, drag them down by Control D, and then select this to bring in connect um, solid element operation, and use this element as a operator subtraction with upward extrusion and trim it off. That's what we have, and if you look at it from this direction, you have nice tiling of your your kitchen walls. Okay. So another issue that we need to be fixed is the the step layer that you could see now. I think this needs to be all the way. I could do it on three. I'm mean on floor plan. Yeah, to be accurate, you can do it on the floor plan, but. There we go we need to have some railing here the top finish of this should be wood i'm going to use wood oak for everything okay and then the, the underside of it and i'm gonna change the material to be timber Let's make it timber structure or timber floors. Make it timber floor. All right. Good stuff. Okay. So we need to now put the railings for this. The railings here. And we can trim off again this issue of the walls encroaching maybe instead of having it uh, let me open its settings and see under geometry and position you find the walls are we can bring it down by minus 100 yeah something like that let's place the railing on this part because definitely we need a railing i'll open the mezzanine floor and then activate the railing tool there are if we click on the favorites you see there are some favorites settings of the railings that you can utilize i'll go with this metal, metal railings and then i'll draw it right from the step ladder oh sorry so it's associative so you need to select your your slab i'll pick my slab and then draw all the way to that right click and hit ok to complete that so what i needed to do is to offset the edge of this all the way to there and then i can move my railings almost there and make sure i trim off that ends if you check on 3d it won't be perfect for the first time okay that's supposed to be on mezzanine floor the home story should be mezzanine should be mezzanine and uh, what I'll do I'll hit edit before I hit edit let's go up here under option under settings and uh, what I want to do is to change the the balusters um, instead of having an equal distribute pattern of maximum length of 100 let's make it 250 make it 250 perfect and then uh, I could hit edit and then I'll select this um, extension open its settings and then I'm going to bend it over and make sure it's by 50 bend it over by 50 I'll do the same to this one select also that one do the same i'll open that bend it by 50. yes okay so that's what i have then i can hit exit 
you could play around with this wall because clearly I'm gonna have a bed there and you can imagine so let's just place a bed and uh, let's say object activate the object I can get rid of the trace just to specify to see the this open its settings and uh, let's find the furniture layout furniture layout and bed make sure you come here under floor plan section and override its line pen to be two hit ok and place it here i'll rotate it to be horizontal facing this direction and then let's position it to here it's going to be tricky because this is a slanting wall so you won't have the exact um, position so i'm gonna say you are supposed to be sitting on zero yeah that's basically what i wanted to achieve <coughs> and then you can go ahead and place some chandelier here and some down lights there there are a lot of things that you could do so if you look at if you go back to our if you go back to our pro our reference project to see you have a lot of things there one thing that i wanted you to um learn from this is to create an extract fluid from this extractor from our kitchen so i know this is a challenging uh, task to do but i'm going to open the west elevation okay and then uh, we have uh, let's come here we have uh, I'll draw a sketch first by using a, a polyline, right? Or even a spline tool. This is the the item. It will come from here. Then go all the way like that. Then it can. No, sorry. Then it can go all the way there. something like this and then the nice part of the uh, spline tool you can come and and adjust your line according to how you want it so this is supposed to go out yeah something like this something like this and then you can because we cannot do our map on elevation so we need to come up with some plan so if i go to options and activate the work environment apply profile and let's find map engineering okay so we cannot run a routine on elevation so the best way is to convert this into a move okay so i'll go back to i should have done it before i convert the profile so let's go back to architectural and uh, i will find uh, move pick on your move and hold space bar to activate the magic one and then click on the line so it will actively um, place your your move which is this line so now we can go back and bring in our MAP profile. So once we are here, let's check on 3D. And uh, you would find we have our line, which is this. So I'm going to select this line and make sure I use the drag and drag along the axis. Right? You could shift and hold to restrict it to that and then i can zoom in oh, sorry sorry about that sorry about that this is one of the problems of working kit sometimes okay let's fix this what i wanted is to bring in this right in the center of this 
that's where the position of our extractor is and then once you are done you can come and choose the the system that you want to use for this is going to be exhaust a and uh, i would use uh, this pipe and set it to be 200 uh, diameter and then i can start routing i'll start by picking this point and go all the way to here i'll go on the axis of this line on the move to on the move line then to the last like that is a problem let's say undo okay the best way is to isolate this line f5 so that i can have a clear vision so i'll start the routing then pick pick it here what's going on let's start the routine and then uh, just do that Make sure you select that and then you can finish okay so that's basically that so if we to show all in 3d you now have your member there so if you want to change the color of this line the color of the surface of this you have to come here under the map systems and then you would see the exhaust air they use the surface the system surface is this you could choose something that uh, maybe it's metal let's go for zinc it will definitely change the whole system okay so that's basically what i wanted to share with you guys um with this project so let's go back on the floor plan let's make this floor plan work because it is as it as it is now it's not our it's not what we want so i'll start with the the, the site and then i'll bring my layers come here and then bring the layer settings what we need to do here is to make sure the mesh layers are off on the layer combination of a site so if you go here you can search maybe landscape there we go make sure they are off and then update oh sorry and then update and then hit ok so what am i doing no it's supposed to be under the ground sorry about that guys it's supposed to be under this drafting so we'll search for search for landscape and then make sure under this drafting uh, layer combination uh, is off so that you can have your own floor plan clearly uh, represented so what i'll do select the slab and then come here under the floor plan and section where is the floor plan and section there is a problem our slab oh because we are still in the profile in the MAP profile, we need to get uh, get out from this. Let's go back to the basic architectural profile. And then that, that's what we have. We can come here under floor plan and section, use the cover fill to represent um, what we have. We, we've used the we've used the the tile. We can come up with something that will resonate or represent the tile, which is this something and then you can change the color to be that something like that or i like to use the plank plank floor and that means i need to change also my floor to represent this plank floor okay for the walls i could change this but there's let's say we change uh, because it uses um, 
a building structural material what we can do we can modify this by saying go to options this is just for presentation but you don't, if you don't want to temper with the building materials you can use the overrides to achieve that for example we can use a simplified override but that will get rid of our our elements as well so each has pros and cons unless you, you are really good at setting out this so what i would do i would go to options and then element attributes and bring in building materials while i'm selected that so it will select this material so what i need to do here is to make a copy of that i will duplicate it let's just leave it at one and then hit okay instead of using a fill that is common brick i would use 100 percent of foreground okay or if i want to still have the outline of my wall i could use maybe 75 okay and then hit okay so that we can now select all the walls let's select all the walls by activating the whole tool and then hit ctrl a change the building structure to building structural one so that's how it's going to change your your walls and then you could do the same to these guys as well they can still use uh, they are still but uh, you could set them but just leave, leave because it's a different feature different material different element let's leave it on a different uh, um, setup like that but this is how it should look you could go with a different pen maybe black let's go back and see building materials the color for this material should be the same should be black so they need to definitely uh, change it to that okay that's basically what i wanted to share with you guys so if you want to check this project file make sure you check our patreon membership uh, ladies and gentlemen and make sure you you uh, just uh, just a cup of tea nothing much in order for us to keep on doing this project so check the link on the description to download this and uh, i will see you in the next project make sure guys if you haven't subscribed to this channel subscribe guys in order for this channel to grow and in order for us to save you well so make sure you do that bye bye